Hi, I'm Lockie. Hi, I'm Christine. And this is The Open Source Show. Hi, I'm Lockie Evenson, a PM on the Cloud Native Compute team at Azure. Hi, I'm Christine, co-founder of Honeycomb. Hey, Christine. Today we're going to be talking about observability and practical observability. You're going to take us into the trenches. First of all is what is observability? I really think of observability as broadly answering questions about your system using data. Uh, it's just being able to answer these new questions, find out these new unknowns, instead of being tied to uh, the questions that we predicted a couple months ago when we set up those dashboards. Observability starts by just having starting off with a high-level view of what you care about. Um, for example, an API server, starting off with just basic HTTP attributes, something that lets you describe the traffic that you care about, but then it's like peeling an onion. You, you add more context that you care about. You add attributes that you find might be interesting later on. What do they mean for me? And how do I need to shift the way that I either write code or, or uh, operate code? What are some tangible ways that I need to start thinking about breaking up this problem that is observability? One of the things that's the hardest for people to wrap their heads around is uh, we talk a lot about events. And we think of events as a unit of work where um, in metrics land or log land, one thing happens. And events are really a way of saying, hey, let's not take all these useful pieces of information and throw them into the ether. Let's actually hold them in, in a, you know, in our case, um, in Honeycomb's world, we just hold it in a JSON blob and capture all of it together. Some people talk about events as just structured logs. Sure, that's fine too. But what really matters is, is saying, hey, I care about this, this thing that happened, this unit of work, mm. and let me capture it in a way that lets me, in the future, go and, and tease it apart and see, oh, for this request, it had all this metadata along with it. Coming from an operational background, you've thrown some words at me, like logs and events, and um, I'm just wondering how observability is different to what I would think of as traditional monitoring, like Nagios. I have Nagios there, I have Ganglia. When I think about the logging world or the monitoring world, um, I think of, 20 years ago, we were constrained by the technology that we had in the 90s, where we had uh, grep and we had counters, because we just didn't have more memory or more compute. And along the way, grep became distributed grep over more text, and counters became RRDs. Um, and then you have distributed grep with a UI on top, and then RRDs with a UI on top, and these two fields have diverged. When in fact, they're describing the same system, um, you, you very frequently want to use one to understand the high-level picture and then dive into the other to understand what's really going on. And what observability is trying to do is say, hey, we don't need to, we don't need to draw this line. We don't need to go in these two different directions. We all have the same goal. Let's think about how we can best serve that goal. Well, I'm very tactical, so can you show me a demo? I hear you brought a demo today. Can you show <laughs> me how easy it would be to instrument my code and make it observable? Uh, I'm going to show you our API server, which has started off with a little bit of instrumentation already. But I'll show you, when you encounter a new problem, what it looks like to add a little bit of uh, metadata and get so much value. Today, we're going to work on a really stripped down version of what the Honeycomb API server might look like. It's an online HTTP server that receives JSON, authenticates it, parses it, and writes it to a queue for processing. Because we're a platform, our various customers might have wildly different workloads. To observe this, we'll want top level metrics, but broken down by the business identifiers we care about. We're starting off with a project that already has a Honeycomb Beeline for Go installed. This sets up some automatic instrumentation of common libraries like my URL router and HTTP server. For more on automatic instrumentation like this, check out docs.honeycomb.io for all of our open source integrations. So on the right, you can see all the fields we get just by dropping those few lines in. Um, and we can do some basic queries to see things like, what have our slowest requests been? How slow have they been? Um, we could do that over the last two hours or even just the last few minutes. Now that we've got the basics in place, I really want to add some basic instrumentation, um, something that makes sense to my business. As I mentioned, we're platform, so we really care about being able to dive into individual customer behavior, either what they're doing or what they're seeing, latencies from their perspective. So let's make sure to capture the team or the customer name, and the data set name associated with each request. 
and we'll restart our server to pick up our changes. And once we do that, uh, that data will be in Honeycomb automatically for us to query against. Uh, you can see these two new fields on the right. And we can now start breaking down by things like what are the slowest endpoints by data set coming in. I'm going to keep going since that seemed to work well and add a few other timers um, and bits of metadata for uh, that will be useful on each request. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of timers in particular just so that we can be able to drill down or isolate the source of any sort of increased latency if we're ever curious about why overall requests are slow. Um, note also that I'm not, I don't have a particular graph or metric in mind as I'm going along capturing these bits of context, capturing these timers. My goal is really just to be able to see in the output of this instrumentation a little bit more about what my code is doing. Like I said earlier, observability is all about not having to predict the precise metric tag combinations I'll need in the future. It's about capturing instrumentation quickly and easily. If it happens to be context, you think it's gonna be relevant to the execution of your code. And with all these new fields, let's run some new queries. Instead of that max duration graph, let's instead show the distribution of those get partition timings in particular. That red bar along the bottom tells me that actually, most requests spend very little time getting their partition. So what's going on with the ones that are? Let's isolate just the ones that are taking a long time to get their partition and keep going deeper and deeper. And the best part, all that delicious context is still there. When I want to get down, look at the raw data and really investigate more into anything, anything I want, see what really happened. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you for showing me how simple it is to make my code observable. Yeah, a lot of people think about instrumentation as this, this big task that you have to take on right away, but really it's something iterative. It's something that evolves alongside your code. And that's why it fits so well with the software engineer, software owner mindset. It's people who understand that software systems are an evolving thing and that your observability, your instrumentation, all of this should evolve along with it. So you've told me what observability is. You told me why I need it. You've even given me an awesome demo on how I can get started. Where can I go to connect for further information if I really want to dig in and own this thing? Look at some piece of software that you're having a little bit of trouble with or where you have some questions that you'd like to answer. Just start instrumenting. Start identifying some places where you'd like to capture some metadata and um, toss it into your observability tool of choice. I prefer Honeycomb but you're welcome to use whatever tool you'd like. Thank you for your insight and showing me really practically how to dig in and make my system as observable. Our links will be in the bottom and you can go to opensource.microsoft.com for further information. Thanks for joining us.